Hi, I am Paul. And I'm Rebecca. Now, for those watching this channel for a little while... The video title um, probably may seem a little bit familiar. But that's for good reason, because we've been here before to try and solve a Roman road mystery, in particular a Roman road with a big kink. So why are we here again? Because not only have we solved the Roman road mystery, but we've also found another kink. God. We may well need this, Rebecca. Maybe a little bit of context first. Yeah. Okay, so this is a 60 second context and catch up. Here's the timer, let's go. Now by and large, Roman roads go in a straight line. Give or take the odd angle change in direction between two cities or two towns. Broadly speaking, Roman roads go in a straight line. So over in East Wiltshire, that's not the case on one particular Roman road. It takes an immediate deviation from its line, takes a four mile loop in a semicircle, and then rejoins its original line. Here, heads up from the south, takes a corner here, heads due west along the causeway. That corner is about 110 degrees. Now the issue I have with that is it's not very Roman. The Romans were meticulous planners. If you were avoiding a hill or wet valley or anything, you'd simply head to the apex of the deviation in a straight line. That is the thing that's been troubling us the most. That phrase, remember that phrase, immediate deviation. Context over. Now, during those first two videos, we came to a theory and we, um, we theorised that actually maybe the road didn't take the kink first of all and maybe it actually went straight on across the valley. So you mean after a period of time they changed the route around the causeway so there were actually two routes? Indeed yes and we actually found some evidence that this may well be the case. It's just up ahead. So this is Grimm's Ditch, the ditch we're walking in now. Now Grimm's Ditch predates anything Roman by at least 500 years, which is really useful. Now it actually runs, or this section runs, parallel to the southern part of the Roman road deviation, which is really useful. We'll come to that in a moment. I'm going to carry on walking along Grimm's Ditch uh, with kind permission from the farm manager of this area. So we are trespassing, but we're doing so with permission. Turns out the farm manager is actually our biggest fan. Right, Ed? Ed? Now the reason why it is so useful is if the Roman road did go straight on, it would have cut straight through Grimm's ditch. Uh, Paul? What yeah. are you doing? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Nothing, nothing to see here whatsoever. So what we did is we took a walk along Grimm's ditch and tried to find if there was a gap in it particularly in line with where a Roman road would have gone straight on. And what we found really sort of highlighted and proved the theory. So Grimm's Ditch now goes uh, east-west along in front of me here. And to my left, we found a, a cut in Grimm's Ditch, a significant cut, what looks like a sunken lane. You're not gonna see it today because it's late spring and there's vegetation everywhere. However, I'll show you some winter shots which really do highlight exactly what we found and gives rise to the justification that the sign is needed. We found a Roman road which was post Grimm's Ditch and cut across it down the hill. So hold on, I thought you said you'd solved the mystery and you found another kink. That's true on both counts, coming right up for our lovely viewers. Oh, they are lovely, aren't they? They really you, are lovely. You, 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 yeah, you, you, you're lovely. You. Now one thing that we didn't consider in previous videos is the northern part of this whole immediate deviation, the top of the circle that heads back onto the straight line. Now as we head around the causeway you can take a look at a couple of satellite images just to the north of that immediate deviation and sure as you like you can see a few crop marks there. But what about just to the south of this? Is there any indication that the Roman road did go straight on here, as with the southern end heading into Grimm's Ditch? Well, can we see anything on the ground here? Okay, before we do that, let's tease you with something else. Oh, is it time for the second kink? It's time for the second kink. We'll come back to the first kink, the northern part, because it's definitely worth it. Right, so right now we're in the village of Martin, or just to our left there. Now Martin is about 
I don't know, two miles north of the original kink. How we didn't spot this kink, I don't know. However, I've been trying to establish if it is a Roman kink, and I'm pretty sure it's not, but it would still be worth having a look exactly why it does kink. Because as far back as I can go in terms of mapping, the village of Martin had a big kink, but it's a square one squared deviation and it's really been bothering me for a while now why this does a squared kink off of the main roman road it doesn't quite add up you get that feeling you've been followed <laughs> <laughs> yeah Babies. now the thing is i want to go in that field because we can to show them exactly why i think i've come up with a theory on why there was a kink okay this is going to be interesting because they're all small cows it's fine. Oh, they're a bit scared of us. This is good, Rebecca. They're perhaps more scared of us than they are. We are of them. We are of them, maybe. Just don't show I'm not your convinced. fear. Don't show, don't show your fear. This side. Okay. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you sure this isn't Roman? Well, y you think it could be, right? Because it looks like it could be some kind of town or small settlement because it's square and it goes right over the top of the original Roman road. Mm -hmm. But my thinking is we're too close to Coutinho or Marlborough oh, or okay. Maldenhall. Now look at what is right here in front of us. That's some earthworks. That's some earthworks. And when you do a bit of research on those earthworks, you find out it's a moat. Not only is it a moat, but it was a castle or a fort, okay. like a like a late Saxon, early um, Norman uh, castle or moat. Okay. So the theory is it could well be that what we're stood in right now is what they used to refer to as a kill zone. Okay. So around their castle, their moat, their territory, they had to have a set distance around it. And that just so happened that that encroached on the Roman road. So we were just walking before the cow field, the big field that we just walked across, right in the middle, just been ploughed, probably what, maybe like a week or two before. Probably. Just found this. So we've marked the location that we found this on our um, like GPS thingy, so the exact location. So we'll pick it up, because it's only going to get turned over again and again and again, isn't it? But I d I'm not an expert on um, Neolithic sort of tools, but it looks like it's been worked. Lots, lots and lots and lots. Now that's really interesting because just down here, is a, is a um, Neolithic burial mound. I say Neolithic, probably Bronze Age burial ground. But nevertheless, it all kind of fits together, doesn't it? Shh. We've been seen. We've been seen, quick, come on. Don't run, they're probably trying, but no, no. Oh, shit, they're that. running, oh my God, they're running. They're blocking the pathway, Rebecca. Take a break. It's on film, so if you do anything criminal, you'd be busted, all right? <laughs> they are quite scared, actually, aren't they? They are, but they're also playful. Yeah. That. I think if you stay on your ground, they don't... Stop. Yep. Yeah, um, they can smell the fear, Rebecca, quick. Right. As the kids would say, I nearly died. <laughs> Oh, you're so gorgeous. They are very from cute, aren't they? Uh, big wow. Right, Rebecca? Very much so. Big wow. We've just met um, Deborah and Howard. Yes. Lovely people. Absolutely lovely people. <clears throat> we thought we'd chance our arm. We came to Beacon Farm, northern side of the original Big Kink, and we wanted to uh, trespass with permission into somewhere called Mackham Wood. Now Mackham Wood would be in line with the uh, what we are kind of call the original straight line Roman route. So we wondered if we could get there so we spoke to these lovely people on the farm just up there and they were full of knowledge and history and enthusiasm and helped us go on this route that we're on now. But we can now get to where we think if there's going to be some evidence on the ground of a Roman road that went in a straight line instead of taking the huge kink, we're going to find it up here in the uh, Mackham Woods, Mackham Bottom, I believe it's called. However, in the meantime, I'm now looking on where I think, according to my maps, you'd find the exact alignment of the Roman road behind me through the woods and straight across the valley in front of me that way if it had taken that original route. No evidence whatsoever on the ground, not even a lump or bump here, which is a bit of a shame. Let's head into the woods from the top for one last ditch look. 
Right, we're now in the middle of those woods and we're trying to find obviously the Rome Road that would have gone perpendicular to these woods, Macam Bottom Woods, so we call them. Down there to the drop towards the north is very steep. So that tells us that actually we're probably not looking for a road in its traditional sense, a Roman road. We're looking for a terrace that went down the side of the hill, very similar to the one on the south side of the uh, the curve. So um, these woods, I feel like these woods are a little bit older, not huge old. There's con new conifers and that back there. A yeah. little bit older here, but we don't know how old. Probably quite old because it's too steep to um, plow. Um, but evidence of a terrace would be good about now to prove or help prove the theory or disprove it. Right, well this is quite exciting. We weren't expecting to find this because it didn't really show up on LiDAR but we're on line with where the Roman road should have gone. I'm going to turn the camera around and I want you to see Rebecca there in the distance. Rebecca, do you want to point your arms in our direction? No, nope, that's the way we're facing. There, right? Yeah? So you are in what is a big cutting, yeah? You can see that. If I go down here, you can see the level that we've been walking along is there. And all of us, you know, we should be walking at this level, but it goes down and it goes up. Now that is on the exact alignment. Doesn't, doesn't show on this camera. You just can't tell. It doesn't show on any camera. No, that. but the, the, the whole slope of here just disappears here and goes down there like that. But there you have a level, that level should come across here, it doesn't, it dips right down here. And then back up the other and side. And then back up the other side there. So this slope here, we walked along, dips right down there. Well, so that was better than what we expected, a lot better. We mm -hmm. wanted to try and find some evidence in this woods, which we'd hoped had been untouched for a long time, of a, 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 an attempt at a Roman road. And I think that's probably what we had, that's as best as we're going to get. Oh, so. Very, very similar to the southern end. Mm -hmm. And to my mind, that gives us a conclusion that they started to build this and they built it over a number of years and they, they, they headed their way down into the valley that side and over there. Yep. And then after a year or two years or three years of use, maybe 10 years of use, they said, this is definitely not the right way to do things. Yep. The valley's getting worse and worse. The roads are in worse condition. There's an ancient trackway that goes all the way around the outside called Chute Causewell, whatever it's called. Yep. Why don't we that. just take that? And this one pretty quickly fell into disrepair yep. and you're left with very, very vague remnants. That's why you're not left with many remnants today. Yep. That's why the LIDAR doesn't show up on any of the big fields that you see. There's nothing, no trace of yep. it. It's already been just de de demolished. Because it was demolished sort of within a decade of the Romans being yep. here and we're left with just faint traces in the landscape now. Mm. That's my theory, at least anyway. I think it's a great theory. So hopefully you've enjoyed the tale of two kinks in this Roman road. It's been fun, because it always is when we do these sort of videos. Mm. Um, gonna carry on doing a mix of short form and long form, because that's what we kind of like the most, yeah. I think. But if you want to become one of our patrons, you do guarantee yourself a weekly video behind the scenes, me and Rebecca larking around <laughs> unedited. <laughs> Yep. to say the least. <laughs> so, uh, from Whitewick Terrace, Aww. it's been a pleasure. Thanks for watching, people. <laughs>